let's take a look at how easy it is to start learning how to use Calc Manager. I'll show you a couple of use cases. Um, first of all, how to just get started with it using regular inbox controls. And then I'll show you how to work with Calc Manager together with WinGrid. So first of all, let's start off with some basic inbox Microsoft controls. I'd like to grab my grab a label here, so I'll double click on a label and I'll take two text boxes. So let's just make a really simple, if I was gonna make a very simple um, you know, application where I enter numeric values in these text boxes and I want to show the results in this label. So you know, I can do that very very easily with code and a button and a little click event of a button. And yeah, but I'll show you how great using Calc Manager is so that you can allow these controls to participate in the Calc Manager's calculation network and the Calc Manager does it for you. So again, this is a very simple example, but just let your imagination go wild and imagine coming up with a much more complex form with different types of controls, things like sliders and a bunch of other infragistics, numeric specific type of editors like Currency editor, numeric editor, and so forth, daytime editors, and all that stuff working together. So I'm going to now go to the NetAdvantage toolbox and locate the Ultra Calc Manager component. I'm going to double click on that guy right there and place it in the component system component tray here, the component area of the Windows form. And what we also need to do is click on any one of these text boxes. Notice that they gain properties to the property extenders. So calc settings on ultra calc manager. So if I make this a little bigger and expand this, there's a couple of things that we can do to enhance and set properties on each one of these text boxes so that it becomes so that it participates in the calc manager's calculation network. So the trick is that what we want to do is we want to click on the text box, the label itself, and go to its calc settings on calc manager one and go to the formula because we want to set the formula on the actual label so that it renders the results. And because the calc manager is on the form, I could click on this little ellipse button on the formula property and it will launch the formula builder, which is actually part of the calc manager. Notice how I could get all these formulas. So there's lots of formulas that I could choose from. But the reason why I launched this right now is that I really don't have a way of generating a formula by dragging and dropping controls that are available to me. The reason why these controls are not available to me is because I didn't set the properties that I told you I was going to set on the text boxes themselves. So notice that in order to make this work, we need to first set up all the items that will participate in the calculation first. And then finally, we go to the destination control. And in this case, it's my label control that will display the results. So let's do that. I'm going to go to one text box and I'm going to give it an alias. So let's say um, one, we just call it one for now. But imagine giving these more descriptive names like the, uh, I don't know, the, the interest text box or the whatever variable text box. That way you recognize exactly what it is. And now we also need to specify the property name of this control that we want to look at. So in other words, what property of the text box should the Calc Manager look at? We could type in the text property, just like that. Whoops, text property. And then we do the same exact thing for the other text box. And we set its property name to text as well. That's all we do to these guys. Now let's go back to the label, and we know the drill by now. Go to the formula property, and click on the little ellipse here, and notice that we have a section that did not exist before called controls. These are all the controls on the form that can participate in the calculation. And you can do lots of things. So, I mean, to keep this simple, I could just drag this one here, and we could choose any one of these operators, so plus this one here. So here's a very simple formula. By the way, you could also type this stuff in. So I could do, um, yeah, something like this. One plus two. When I do that, notice how the formula compiled successfully. If I type in a bunch of garbage, it's going to give me instant feedback telling me that 
doesn't know what I'm talking about here. So I click OK. And when we run the application, oh, another couple of things that we can do. What I want to do is treat as type. Let's say if we wanted to just treat these as say, int32. And I'll treat this one as an int32 as well. And keep in mind, I didn't type in any, I, I didn't write any code to kind of validate my input. So let's take a look at how it behaves just without me writing any code. All I did was threw some controls on the form and set some properties and we run it. And once this loads, notice that immediately there's no numbers in there, so it's giving me error messages. So see how it's already giving me some feedback telling me that you know, the input string was not in a correct format. So let's put one and then we type one here and immediately it jumps to two. So it works instantly. So the calc manager monitors all the various controls that are within its calculation network, and as soon as values change, it recalculates and gives you the results in the label or whatever other control you chose to use. So let's have a little bit of fun. Let's do um, let's do something like let's find a typical slider control. Track bar. Track bar. I use the infragistics one, but we can use this one here. Um, if I set its min and max values here. Two, one, and then that should be fine. One, one. So the other thing I could do is the calc manager settings here. One, two, and then multiplier. And we want to look at its value. value property for this and then back to label one and then to go to label one's formula. So we could do something like this. And then I kind of group these two guys here. So we'll do one plus two multiplied by We could leave that. We could actually leave out the forward slash forward slash. Let's see what this gives us. Let's do and 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 let's slide this around. And see, there you go. So this is how awesome the calc manager is because you could do this without the calc manager, but you know this is a simple example, but. The calc manager's value comes when you start building forms that have lots of different types of input fields and editors and controls that provide values for your calculations. However, there's a lot of value that the calc manager adds because I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to just jump to any one of these guys. It doesn't matter. So if I jump to the label and launch the formula editor again, here's where the real value comes up. First of all, you have all these functions available to you. So I just scroll down. You can get a quick look at all the functions. I mean, do you want to code all these? Well, you know, they're in there for you. The other thing that I want to explain is that, let's say if your business encapsulates or has some kind of business logic and formulas and proprietary logic that, that evaluates stuff and gives you results, you can set that up and encapsulate that as a calc manager formula and it will show up in this list. So if you wanted to Allow your developers to implement your specific formulas in this fashion, or have they can have access to it, then you could expose it to them in this way and you know, it makes their job easier. So let's also jump into using Calc Manager in a WinGrid application. So I'm going to jump to this other example that I had here in one of the other videos. And by this time you should know that in order in order to have Calc Manager support, you're supposed to dump it onto the form. So let's the Ultra Calc Manager in our toolbox and dump it onto this form. So now it's here. And that's all I did here. So let's go to we can do this several ways. We could either navigate through the properties window or click on the start button and use the Win Grid Designer. So let's have a little fun. Let's take the scenic route. I'm going to go to the grid. Click on the grid. And then we're going to go to the display layout property. And we're going to locate the bands. 
So there should be three entities within the span. Let's go to order details. This one is the one that contains columns that will make sense. Locate the columns property and then click on the little button to launch the collections editor for the columns. What I want to do is let's add a dummy column, an unbound column, and let's just call it total. That's the key. So I can access it 